Joining me now is a UFC Waltweight fighter who takes on Platinum Mike Perry at UFC on Fox 28 on February 24th in Orlando, Florida. It is Max Payne Griffin here on the program for the second time. It has been a while, Max, as I said just now off air. Thank you very much uh, for taking the time. How's it going? Yo, 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 man. You got me pumped up announcing that, man. I could, I'm excited. I'm doing very well. and um, I'm stoked. Stoked for this fight, bro. Stoked. Yeah, so this fight was just announced uh, just uh, a few days ago, about a week ago maybe. You were uh, scheduled to take on Mike Perry, who, whether or not people like him, he is a pretty big name. He's a good talent uh, at 170 pounds, and this is a big opportunity. What was your reaction when you got the call to fight Mike Perry? Man, I was, I screamed, I'm not going to lie. Um, first, first I got the call from my manager, Dave Hirschbein. He called me and said, good news, first thing we're fighting in the U.S. So that was my first win. I've been fighting out of the country for years, it seems like. Uh, my last three scheduled fights were out of the country. So it was good to be back on U.S. soil. He then said, Mike Perry, and oh, my God, I felt like a little girl screaming. Um, I'm excited, so excited for that. I've been wanting to fight him for a while, and, uh, you know, I know it would be a good fight for me. Um, I even told Sean Shelby back in the day, me and Mike were together, and we um, saw Sean and said we had the fight. I just didn't know it would be this soon. I know he's hot right now. He's popular. He's probably, like, the most popular Walter Way if you look at, you know, social media presence at this time. So for me, man, it's an honor to, it's on, and you know, it's a fucking honor, man, you know, to be on, be, you know, fight this caliber of an opponent um, in Orlando. Do you have enough time for a full camp, or do you still consider this almost like a little bit short notice? Not obviously a week or two, but you have a, you have quite a while. But is it enough for what you would consider a full camp? Yeah, I'm always training, so I'm not even I don't even really know what a full camp is. Honestly, um, I'm trying. You know, like I said, I train year round. I don't take you know months off, and you know I'm always in the gym. So. I believe it was like 51 days or something when I first heard about it. Plenty of time. Right. The day this fight was announced, Perry was on the MMA Hour with Ariel Hawani, and I know he didn't actually announce that he was fighting you on the card. I think what he said, he was fighting a former opponent of Colby Covington in Orlando, something along those lines. And I know he mentioned that afterwards, He, you said to him at the athlete retreat last May that you wanted to fight him. Is that true? Like You mentioned just now that you've wanted to fight Perry for so long. Why is that, first off? And uh, what did, did anything happen at the athlete retreat? Or was it more just you respectfully you know, told him, let's fight? Well, I met Mike at a 202, actually. That was uh, the McGregor rematch with Nate Diaz part two me and him debuted on that card so you know we ran into each other along the way you know hey what's up shit you know you your debut too cool you know so we kind of linked up seen him again in uh, Mexico City he was cornering Nicholson and um you know so I seen him out there so we're running into him a lot and at the retreat you know we're all hanging out together me and him were actually uh at the Performance Institute during the tour. I think it was the opening of it. Everyone was having drinks and not, and we were uh, hitting the pads. They have uh, they have these power pads on the wall that tell you how hard you're hitting. So, there, you know, there's a bunch of guys up there, you know, hitting the pad, hitting the pad. I mean, him were up there just going blow for blow, you know. I swear we were within, like, four pounds, you know, on that thing, over thousands of pounds. Um, we were doing that, and, so, you know, so we were up there, and then, in the course of the day, we were we were together, and uh, we seen Sean Shelby, and uh, I think he told me we're gonna fight too. It was kind of like a mutual thing. We both said we're gonna fight each other. We got similar records, you know. We both want to go out there and knock people out. So I was like, you know, we're gonna fight someday. And I told Sean Shelby, "Hey, we're gonna fight," you know. And he's like, "Yeah, that would be a good fight." I just didn't think it would happen now. Right. What? Why you know? is that? You know, I know he was trying to get it, uh, Darren Till and these guys that are ranked, and he's been doing co-main and main events, and, you know. I thought he'd fight someone ranked. Okay. You know, just just based on his past. And um, once I heard they gave me that name, man, a blessing. Blessing. I love the matchup. It's such a great opportunity. 
Um, I'm humbly blessed. I'm, you know, humbly blessed to feel that they're having me in that category. You know, they're having me in the echelon of guys and, you know, giving me the test. I like it. Love it. And it's also a good way to get off a loss because you're coming off that loss to Zaleski Dos Santos. And I feel like a win over Mike Perry, everybody would forget about your last fight. No, for sure. Um, I just like to attribute my last fight to the fight of the night. You know, they, the owners know I could fight. They picked the bonus. So I'm glad they selected, selected Mike Perry for the job. You know, they know they know it's going to be a good fight. And uh, I'm not scared, you know. I think a lot of guys, uh, he intimidates and whatnot, but not I. <laughs> What, what no. do you think of him as a person, as a fighter? I mean, are you a fan? You know, if you guys weren't fighting, are you typically a fan of Mike Perry? I know not everybody is. No one. I mean, everyone hates him. But me and him have always had good, you know, we were playing cornhole and shit. I was whooping him in cornhole. At the, <laughs> um, I got the better of cornhole when we were at the retreat, you know. So we were hanging out. You know, so there's no bad blood. It's kind of just a mutual respect thing. I heard some things, he, you know, he said some things about uh you know, he open, he welcomes me with open arms and closed fists and this and that. And uh, I like it, you know. I'm sure you see where the shit talking is going to go. But uh, he knows he knows it's going to be a good fight, you know. He knows I'm not just some uh, pushover and, uh, you know, I don't know what the, you know, the numbers are. But um, it's a great matchup. Will you find it? Do you feel like it? It'll be a bit strange if he starts talking trash about you, which it seems likely, just because it's Mike Perry and that's what he does. Even though you sort of had that connection and you guys, you know, hung out at the retreat, saw, you know, saw each other at, at a couple cards, um, and, and as you said, there was no real bad blood. But knowing who Mike Perry but we're is, we're fighting. I get it. We're fighting. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, to me, it's business. He wants to talk shit. You know, I know he's you know he's an emotional guy. Um, you know, I try to be kind of stone cold in there. So, um, you know, he might use it against himself. So I'm curious to see, you know, how far he goes. That's it. Can you talk about your 2017 year a little bit? Um, uh, of course, you got that injury. You were supposed to fight in March of last year. You were supposed to uh, take on Sergio Marais, and you ended up uh, pulling out of that with an injury. What exactly happened first off? I... I'm not going to say, but okay. what I can say is it was about 10 days. I just like telling people my injuries because, you know, like you'll ask them or whatever. Right. So that's the only reason of that. But um, I got hurt training about, I think, 11 days before. Um, I want to say I was wrestling. I was getting shark tanked. And something did happen. I was like, oh, shit, this isn't right. Um, started burning, actually, in the place that it happened. Uh, stopped training. Um you know, called the doctor, went went to the doctor the next day, and, yeah, um, something was badly damaged. And they said, hey, um, do you have to fight? Because either way, you shouldn't. It's, it's, you know, it's a risk. It's a risk for your life. It could have been a bad, I mean, it was a bad injury, but, you know, I could have had some serious complications from continuing. and It just wasn't worth it. You know, if it was some backyard show and I needed the money, then, yeah, but. If I want to be a UFC champion one day, one of the best, uh, I need to look at my longevity and um, make the choice, you know. And um, it sucks, you know, but hey, you know, it's hard enough to win a fight when you're 100%. How tough was last year for you? Just because you you didn't fight until October, and unfortunately you came up short against Leski Dos Santos, um, and, and then of course adding in the injury, having to sit on the sidelines for the majority of the year. It, you know, 2017. It, it's fair to say I would think that it didn't really go uh, go as planned. How tough was it? <laughs> you never know. You know, what I mean, you never know what the plan is, right? Sure. But I'd say uh, 2017 got saved for me with my the bonus. That bonus saves me. Really? That bonus, uh, yeah, I actually uh, made the choice to go full time with that bonus. Oh wow! I've had a job my whole career. My whole career, I've had a freaking big job, you know, career job. What did you do? We we might have talked about this a year or so ago, but I I don't remember. Um, so pardon my ignorance. But what did you do? No worries. Um, I used to work at Blue Shirt of California for the last seven years. 
a facilities coordinator. So basically, I'm a property manager. Okay. For shit. You know, uh, Blue Shield um, Insurance as a whole in Northern California. So it was like 600,000 square feet, 5,000 people. You know, everything inside is just a lot of coordinating, a lot of corporate real estate. It was a lot of just time, you know. It was 40, 50 hours a week for years. So now, uh, with that bonus, um, as of January, January 1st, you know, I uh, quit my job and um, I'm fighting full time, taking leave of absence. And um, if I got this far part time, I mean, the sky's the limit if I could put everything into it. Congratulations. So, that That is career changing, perhaps, I would think. Yeah, I mean, I got to, to me, team, you know, to me, you know, I'm doing okay for, you know, technically part time training. You know, I, I wake up in the morning, train, go to work, and get off and train. Now, to be able to wake up and schedule my day, get my recovery, get my extra sessions in, on that consistency, those those hours, it's, man, I'm a happy camper, bro. And um, it came perfect time for this Terry fight. You know, it, it's, uh, it's, it, it all fell into place. I literally put in my two weeks at my job, and that last day of work, I got the Perry call. Oh, wow. So it, it, it all <laughs> fell into place by the day, you know? What a great start to 2018. Or I guess that would have been late 2017 still, but nonetheless, great end of the year. Yeah, yeah. So um, to be able to be a full-time fighter and uh, get this Mike Perry fight, ooh, ooh, oh, man, I'm telling you, man, I'm going to fuck him up. It's going to be nice. <laughs> so your job, did you work 9 to 5? Yeah, I worked about eight, about eight to five. Yeah. Okay, so it, a long work day. Um, typically, I would think behind a desk, right? Or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did behind a desk. You will call all that. So, how many training sessions are you starting to have now as a full time fighter? Man, a day. I tried to do like ten, but that was about <laughs> you know four or five. You know, I was overzealous. Like, hold on, I got all this time. Um. Yeah, last week I put too much in the day, you know what I mean? Like, if I got all this time, I could do this and this and that. But now I got to, you know, tweak it so, you know, I'm not too tired for the next thing and space different things out. Uh, but I'm already noticing a difference. I mean, my jiu-jitsu coach hit <laughs> me. are like, oh, okay, I see you more now, you know. Not like I didn't train every day, but there's a difference between five days and um, two, three, four days, you know. It's uh, just a consistency and having that time. You know, I've been, uh, yeah, it's, it's a blessing. It's, it, it feels so natural. If I tell my life, you know, how, how it's really like a dream come true. You right. know, to fight full time, support yourself, and just fight. You know, so I got like a son and all this stuff. So, I, you know, you can't just not work and depend on fighting like that. So it's a, a big change, but you got to make that jump. And I'm confident in everything I can do, so. You know, so did you say that running. now as a full-time fighter, you're training five out of seven days per week? I was already training. I'm, I'm talking about sessions. Okay. I'm probably still uh, I'm probably about doing about six days. Okay. But I was doing that anyway. But the problem was I was rushing here, rushing there. Right. Um, cutting this. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a hassle when you got to be somewhere, right? But, uh, right. you know, yeah. when you can kind of make your own schedule, it's uh, a lot better. And also, to meditate. Right. as you said, you're able to spend time with your family, I, I would think. More time, too. Yeah. Yeah, see my son more, you know. Um, it's great. It's uh, I'm so happy. People see me, they're like, you're so happy. I'm like, man, I'm just fighting. So uh, I'm excited to show the world what I can do full time. I know it's you been... Know? So, Sorry, I know it's been two weeks, but in your skills, have you noticed a difference? A difference? Have you noticed a change already? I have. I'm real conscious of my body. Um, that's what I'm learning as you get older and whatnot. As you go farther, you guys listen to listen to your body, and I'm real conscious of what happens. And uh, I'm seeing stuff from like in my jujitsu, and you know, like I ever said, like. Um, a, a big change is I got my coach, my night coach, my main sensei, Dave Marinoble. I used to just see him at night a few times a week. 
Now I see him on top of this three nights a week. I see him twice in the morning during those other days, you know. So I'm seeing him five days in a row, you know. So it's just we're just building on things, and it's uh, it's crazy. I'm so excited. I, I'm, you know, I'm speechless for what's about to happen. Have you thought about what happens if the you know this doesn't work out because you can't necessarily rely on a post fight bonus now this might parry fight you're actually in a pretty good spot as far as getting a fight of the night it seems like a fight of the night in the making to me anyways but if you don't get keep you know do you feel like now you're going to be pressuring yourself into now I need to re- get up the ladder I I need to sort of get off this loss I need to get a couple wins and sort of make a bigger name for myself or else. Like, are you concerned about what if I have to end up going back to to a day job? Not at all. Not at all. Um, this is what I'm supposed to do, and I have 100% faith in it. Okay. In my abilities and uh, just how I feel in the place. And I mean, it took a few months to get that bonus. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the, in uh, in Brazil, right? I was in the bar, got the bonus. Yeah, I'm quitting my job. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for real, my coaches, everything. Was that the plan? Like even that October late late October it was then, night? The night after. Yeah. They're like, dude, you got the bonus, everything else for a reason. You're quitting your job. Hey, you know, let's go. And I was like, Yeah. So then it took about two months to get my bonus. So good thing I didn't quit <laughs> during that time. Why did it uh, take so long? Is that just typical from the UFC or was it late? I don't know. I don't know if it was USADA or like I don't know what happened. Cause I didn't get my test results or anything yet either, you know? And typically you get them back in what, a week, two weeks. It was going on a month, a month and a half. And I don't know if like in Brazil they forgot something or what, mm, but that's interesting. But in that time, in that time, I was like, man, should I quit? You know, what if I don't, you know, I got this far right now, you know, hey, you know, we, I would have won that fight if I didn't get hurt. You know, think about my last fight and, um, <laughs> Yeah, too many what ifs. I don't want any what ifs in my life. I want to know I gave it my all. I don't want to say, you know what? I had an opportunity to quit my job and go all in, but I didn't decide to. You know, what would have happened if I would have gave it my all? And uh, I'll bet on myself over anyone in my life. So um, it just feels right. I made a choice. It was a big choice. You know, I got a good job for 401k. You know all that benefits and everything. I'm set, but. Um, you got to strike where the iron's hot, and I couldn't be in a better position in my life. To, um, you know, fight basically a ranked opponent on a main event, main card, not main event, but main card in Orlando in his hometown. I'd be stupid not to quit and give it all I have. I have to. I have to. You know, and I believe in myself. I'm going to knock him out, and bam, here we are, the Griffin Show, you know. So you have four months between your last fight, the Zaleski Dos Santos fight of night in, in Brazil, and uh, this fight, the Mike, the Mike Perry fight in, on February 24th. That's not the quickest turnaround, but that's a lot quicker than 11 months between your first UFC win in Mexico, Eric Montano, the TKO, and then, of course, your last fight. How nice is it to have a much quicker turnaround than your last one, um, especially coming off loss? Because as we talked about earlier, you're sort of able to forget about that quicker. Well, you know, should you get back on track in the Perry fight? Yeah, no, I want to fight. Um, it's different being hurt, right? When you're waiting for a fight, you kind of can't fight. But now, I mean, hey, um, I wanted to fight then. I wanted to fight that night after those, you know, those Santos, you know. And um, I'm excited. It, it was, it was, you know, when I think uh, the owners want to see me fight too, you know. Um, I remember asking Mick Maynard, um, you know, who uh, who picks the bonuses, you know? And he said, me, Dana, Sean, you know, Lawrence. So, you know, with all the owners and the big guys, and for them to, to choose me, I felt like they appreciated what I can do. So that gave me fire as well. Like, oh, they liked it, even on the Guerra, you know? I've seen him. Um, I think he's in charge of UFC Brazil out there. But he was saying, man, that fight was incredible, you know. He thought it was fight at night, and, and, and this was like halfway through. But he said, hey, they gave it to the main card people, but um, they loved it. You know, they said Lawrence is on the feet. So so for that, that's what they, that, that's what the fighters, you know, that's what the fans want. They want fights where you're like, oh, shit, 
damn, you know, what people are slinging. You know, so I think that gave me stock. So I feel yeah. blessed that, uh, you know, that they want the world to see it. I mean, it's on a Fox card. You know, it's never on Fox. It's on Fox, what, twice a year? Something Four like times that? a year. Three times Four a times year. a year. But yeah, Four v- times. very but few. That, but even that. Yep. Even that, you know, that's big. And then he's, you know, going to be main, should be main card. I mean, he's, you know, runs his mouth. Do you know so, if you're the main uh, card, or or do you have you not? I received saw I saw a lineup. I saw like first I saw like kind of who was on it on the card, and then I saw like a lineup, and I was on the main card. Okay. Um, but it's always you know, subject it, to change. But who that, knows that if it was seems... official? Yeah, it, it's always subject I to change, it but it seems promising. <laughs> that at least that you know that's the plan. Yeah, based on Mike Perry, and he's from Orlando. Or around there, you know? So, yeah. I mean, I don't know why he would be, you know? You seem like a guy who likes to focus on the present, on the future, but it still must be crazy looking back. If you didn't get that bonus, if they stuck to the main card guys, and I believe you kicked off the FS1 prelims that night, if you didn't get that fight at night, how different your life would be? Is it crazy to look back and think about that? No, it is. No, that that's why I feel like I had to make this choice. You know, I mean, how many fights were on a card? You know, and there were good fights. We were in the back like, shit, these are some good fights, you know. Uh, but to actually get it, you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, you know, that's what I was telling my bosses. Like, if, if I didn't get the bonus, we wouldn't be talking about me leaving right now. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to financially, you know what I mean? So I just feel like uh, if it went, if the fight went any other way, like if, when I dropped him in the first round, if I would have finished him then, you know, I wouldn't have got, you know, fight of the night. So there's, there's a lot of, I believe everything happens for a reason. And um, how that fight went down, and it was a fucking war, man. And uh, to capture their hearts and to get the bonus was a blessing. But I can't say that enough. That was literally a life changer for me. And um, it's at the right time. So you go in there February 24th, get the win over Platinum, Platinum Mike Perry. Where do you go from there? Do you do you call out a top fifteen guy? Do you want a top fifteen? Whoever they guy? want, I think it's going to speak for itself. Okay. Uh, the damage, no, yeah, the the damage. I'm going to focus on him. The damage I'm going to do to him and on TV in front of the world, man, it's going to be sh- stupid. <laughs> it's going to be ridiculous. So probably people are going to probably be calling me out. Probably what's going to happen. Yeah, they're going to call me out. Your nickname is Pain, after all. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to be a pain in the ass to the division. I'll tell you that. <laughs> and uh, it's going to start getting bad. I know what I could do. You know, and now that I'm full time, now I'm going to show what I could do. And Perry is a perfect opponent, perfect opponent for me. A lot of people are scared of his style. And, you know, he's a heavy puncher. You know, but uh, it's too bad. Do you have a prediction? I'm going to finish him. Uh, if it's not the. Earn, earn the first, uh, maybe second round submission. We'll see. Hurt him. He'll probably shoot or something. Submit him. We'll see though. Um, Alrighty, Max. Thank you very much for the time. It's great to talk to you. Great to catch up. And best of luck to you on February twenty fourth at UFC on Fox twenty eight in Orlando, Florida. Before I let you go, let my audience know where they can find you on social media. And if there's anybody you'd like to thank or give a shout out to, the floor is yours. Man. Um, thanks for the love. Everybody can find me, Max Payne MMA. That's on Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, everything. Max Payne MMA. I'd like to shout out my gym, my sensei, Dave Marinoble, Marinoble's Kickboxing, MMA Gold, Brito MMA, Carnage BJJ with Sensei Jamie Hara, Coach Doug, some of my sponsors, Hayabusa, IAB, I Am Becoming, Fit Kitchen, The Turf House, U.S. Cryotherapy, Imperious Rex, Tattoo Trees, Pacific Audio, Aquabag, Boxaball, Normatech, Gamma Labs, and Warfuel. Um, I knew I forgot someone, but I tried to make a list. And uh, I love you guys. You know, I wouldn't be here without my fans and, uh, you know, my family, my friends, everything. I fight for everybody. So when I say, I don't say I got to fight, I say we got to fight. So uh, I'm doing it for everybody. And, uh, I'm going to knock this full day at 24, straight up. No offense, but uh, it is what it is. It's business.